Taking meeting notes is often an art form. Finding them when you need them can be even more difficult. Having notes linked to other relevant information is often impossible. There are some apps you can use to help you with that. Notion, Obsidian, or my choice, the Brain software. In this episode, we're going to talk about note-taking for meetings in the Brain software. For the rest of this to make sense, there are a few things you need to have set up, including the Brain software, pretty much any version should do, a root thought for companies, and random and unsorted, thought types for companies, and a thought type for person. I like to have a predictable hierarchy in the events I want to navigate physically, so I have a thought type underneath resources for companies and entities. Beneath this thought, I can add companies that I might be dealing with. In this case, I've added Tesla and the brain. Sadly, I'm not in any meetings with either of these companies. I've also added a thought for random and unsorted, which I've pinned here. Random and unsorted is a great place for me to go ahead and just dump things into. I found that having a pinned random and unsorted thought gives me a consistent inbox to dump things. If you practice something like David Allen's Getting Things Done, GTD, remember to review and file your random and unsorted child thoughts routinely. Moving back to my companies, I firmly believe that thought types are essential. Thought types should be reduced as much as they can without actually losing value. What I mean by this is a thought type of company is the lowest reduction, but it doesn't provide value. On the other hand, battery electric vehicle automotive manufacturer is not only a mouthful, but it's too specific and can be reduced to automotive or manufacturer. Here, I have chosen manufacturer. How far you reduce your thought types is up to you, but I have a few that might work for you in my example. I also like to use colors, icons, and other things to help me quickly identify thought types. Here you can see that companies are in light blue, while knowledge-based items are in a purple. By keeping related thought types in the same color and using icons for further delineation, I can keep the number of colors down and increase my information uptake when I wander my thoughts in the Plex. Just remember you can do the same with project thought types as well. Continuing with my thought type reduction, I recommend having a person thought type. I believe that thought types of jobs such as project manager, CEO, software engineer, these should be thought tags as a person can do all these things in their life. Their career does not define them, that they are a person does. In other brains, I have used things such as plants, dogs, cats as thought types as well. Getting back to taking meeting notes, this is one of the parts where I wish the brain had more automation. I'm going to jump back to my companies. This part is a bit cumbersome, but after a few iterations, you can get it rather fast. First, I add a company. Then, I copy the company name. Make sure I add my type, and in this case, I'll just make it, let's say, a retailer. Moving to that company, I then go ahead and I add two more thoughts, using the comma mechanism in order to ensure that I move things faster as well as a semicolon to allow me to do two, two new thoughts at the same time. Now I don't type these because they're really not that important. They're really just a organizational structure. And you'll notice that by actually using the comma, my new code that I've added here is still in there, but when I actually am looking at it, I don't need to see it in the actual thought name. So it makes it a little bit easier for me to understand where my alumni are versus my meetings. Add people if you have time. I'm going to jump over here back to the alumni. When adding a person, it's pretty much the same. I'm going to add as many as I can. Now I am going to type them as person, right? Both at the same time and go ahead and enter them. Now may also be an excellent time to go ahead and add additional information about them, such as their email address, a Wikipedia page, anything of that information. 
The other thing that you can do at this point in time is if you owe this person something that's not part of a project, you can add a to-do there. And of course, it's now going to go ahead and show up in your to-do list. All right, let's clean a few things up here. I'm going to go ahead and select all the things I just created. Okay. Kill meetings, kill new co. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all five of these thoughts. What I want to show you, I'm going to do actually in the pre-existing Tesla meeting notes area. I personally feel that every thought should be as unique as possible, so I use the following format to take meeting notes. I put the company name, I put today's date in ISO 8601 style format, and I put something about the meeting to make it unique. Now of course I'm going to go ahead and type this as a meeting note so that when I create it, it's going to go ahead and show up in the same way, complete with my little meeting note icon. Now, I use a uh, template engine in order to go ahead and put a lot of information in here, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And now I can go ahead and do things such as uh, mark the date with uh, Command D and start filling in my appropriate attendees. You can see my attendee list includes a link to the attendee's thought. Getting the names in the meeting notes is important, but you can always leave it as a to-do in the summary section and come back and make personal thoughts for each of the attendees later. Bonus! By using a markdown template, you can always improve your template and allow yourself to make better and better notes over time. Thank you for joining me for my first episode of Xerix. If you found this information useful, please feel free to like and subscribe and share with your friends.